Hey, LaGrave family. I'm outside enjoying beautiful sunshine today. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And our help is in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, friends, we're into the season of Lent now. And as we turn ourselves toward self-examination and reflection and seeking Jesus as he is, a question that I learned during a chaplaincy internship earlier in my life has been on my mind and heart. As I was visiting people in the hospital, one of the questions I was taught to ask was to ask them, where is God for you in all of this? And I love that question and I hate that question at the same time. On the one hand, I love that question because it allows us to begin to open up our minds and our hearts in a, a gaze of grace um, to ask in, in front of the face of God and perhaps another human being, where is God for me and all of the things that I'm facing? I hate that question because it can falsely put pressure on us to maintain that God is just our experience, our sense of God's nearness is just as strong as it ever was. When in reality, sometimes the things that are swirling around us make it difficult for us to really um, enter into nearness to God as as we have during other seasons of our lives. And sometimes that makes us feel like that's our fault because our doctrine, our, our secure and firm belief as Reformed Christians is that God never changes. So if our sense or our perception of Him has changed, it must be on our end that that change has occurred. And that's a hard thing to hear and to feel when you're walking through a valley. So I ask that question this morning, not for those of you who are walking through a valley to feel beat down in, in your faith or in your conviction, but as a, I hope, I intend it to be, a space of grace for you in front of the divine gaze of a God who loves you more than you can imagine, to be able to open that up and say, yeah, where is God for me in all of this? And if you're brave enough to answer that question, um, you're in good company. And you might also find that it's a distressing question to live with for a while. I say that you're in good company because C.S. Lewis himself kind of came face to face with that question. In the wake of the loss of his wife, Joy, Lewis, in a grief observed, wrote about his desire to know Joy herself. He didn't want pictures of her. He wanted his wife herself. And similarly, Lewis says, he wants God himself. Lewis wrote, my idea of God is not a divine idea. My idea in my head of who God is, Lewis says, that's not God's idea of who God is, it's my idea. And that idea, Lewis again writes, has to be shattered time after time, and God shatters it himself. Could we not almost say that this shattering of my idea of who God is, is one of the marks of God's presence? So if you feel confused or perplexed or a little bit um, off kilter in your understanding of who God is and where he's at and what he's up to, I hope that you take some encouragement from Lewis saying, in that place of shattering, is the place where God can be found. And we're seeking, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ himself. Paul writes in Colossians 1 that Christ is the image. Christ is the picture of the invisible God. So let's together turn our eyes toward Christ during this Lenten season. Let's, under the safety of his gaze, ask him to challenge us in our idols, to make himself known to us as he is, and not as our picture of him would make him out to be. So may the peace of that Christ go with you, wherever you may be, may shelter you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, fill you with thanksgiving at the wonders he shows you, and may he bring us all home rejoicing face to face again once more.